Oh man, oh man. Well, Christmas, welcome, uh, Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. How are y'all doing? I'm glad to see you guys here on this wonderful Lord's Day. Um, I want to ask you guys a question. I want to pick up where kind of Corey left off real quick, and that is, um, what is your favorite, most memorable Christmas present you've ever gotten? I just want you to know, one of the kids is looking for a purple scooter. I just want y'all to know that. All right. <laughs> Can tell which one it was that asked for that, but someone's looking for a purple scooter. What about you? What's your what's your most memorable favorite uh, Christmas gift that you ever got? Shout it out. Family. A what? Family, family is a, a, a great Christmas gift. It's great to have a family, especially those of you that have had little ones born recently. Uh, Mateo. Mateo, what's your favorite present? My siblings. Your siblings are a great present. As an older brother, that's cool that you would say that about them. Yes, sir. A laser gun. All right. Man, oh man. Um, I think that is by far the best that we've had yet. I think a laser gun's better than a bike. No, no offense. That's just me. All right. What else? Somebody else? An arc, a, trip to, a trip to the Ark Encounter? Awesome. That's a great gift. All right. In the back. Yes, sir. You want a dump truck? That is awesome. A real one or a toy one? A real one. I, I kind of figured that is a man after my own heart right there. Every dad wants his son to have and drive a dump truck. Yes, sir. A Nerf X shot insanity. We just did an infomercial there. All right. All right. Is it available at Walmart? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, I want you to think now, have you ever gotten a Christmas present and then it broke. <laughs> I love some of the groans that I just heard. Yes. <laughs> All right, that's the whole reason why we have changed how we do Christmas at the Parker House. We, we kind of got tired of Christmas presents breaking, but uh, that's a whole other story. Well, uh, this morning I want us to look at Christmas and I want us to, to really dig into uh, what Christmas is really about. Christmas is a time of hope. Christmas is a time when uh, presents are given and gifts are exchanged. And, and, and today, I want to do my best to answer some questions about Christmas. And, uh, and to help me do that, I want to begin by reading a passage from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2. So if you have your copy of God's Word, would you please stand with me in the honor of reading of God's Word? And let's read together and just follow along with me. Just a few verses from Luke chapter 2. Let's all stand together and follow along with me if you have your copy of God's Word. Beginning in Luke chapter 2, verse 8, listen to what the Bible says. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. This is uh, one of the most important biblical passages of the Christmas story, and let me tell you why, okay? Because in this passage, it says that the uh, heavenly host was uh, appearing, and it said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, okay, among men with whom he is well pleased. If your translation uses the word among, it needs to be changed. That word needs to be with. Peace with men with whom God is pleased. Let me tell you why that's the most theological statement in this passage. Because it's not that Jesus came to bring us peace with each other. God, God didn't send Jesus into the world to bring peace between you and me. God sent Jesus into the world to bring peace with men who are on earth with him in heaven. That is a huge difference. And today, as we begin to look at this passage, we're going to answer some questions about the hope that we have in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd speak to us through this passage today. God, teach us, guide us, direct us, so that over today and tomorrow, we can honor you with our celebration of Christmas. Father, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. 
Today, I want to do my best to answer three questions uh, this morning, and I want those questions to guide us as we get ready to move towards Christmas tomorrow. The first question is, what is hope? Uh, This passage tells us that the angel came to these shepherds and was telling them, listen, there is good news of great joy, which will be for everyone, for all the people. You see, something was happening that that made this a dramatic moment, a good and glorious moment. It was something that many believers had been trusting in and looking forward to. They were hoping for a Savior to come. And this is the fulfillment of that hopeful moment. But what is hope? Well, let's begin by breaking it down. The word translated hope in this passage is a word that literally means to trust. It means to expect or to confide in. It it literally means, the lexicon say, in a religious sense, that is to wait for salvation with joy and full confidence. I think that's exactly what hope is, right? You and I, think about when you and I are hoping for something. We have this hope. Hope is the joyful and confident waiting for an expectation to be fulfilled, right? I can remember a time, one of my kids, they were hoping for a Batman, um, a Batman uh, house. It was this car that would open up into a Batman play center house, castle. And uh, he was hoping for that and he was wanting it. And it was the one big gift that he was hoping to get for Christmas. He was eagerly, joyfully waiting for Christmas day to come, right? That's what we do. When we have this expectation that something is going to happen, that we're going to get something or we're going to be given something or something will occur, hope is when you are excited, you are rejoicing, but waiting for that to become a reality. That's what it means to hope. Hope is this joyful, confident waiting for whatever expectation it is that you have to be fulfilled. When we think about hope in the Bible, hope is built, or our faith is built upon that kind of hope. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 1 says. Hebrews chapter 1 says, Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So our faith is built upon something that we haven't seen. And so we have this expectation that something we've never seen is going to occur. See, when we think about what our faith is, our faith is having a confident assurance of something that we're looking forward to. That's hope. See, faith is built upon hope. Now, faith is built upon hope in redemption. In Luke chapter 24, which is a few chapters past, we're at here in the Gospel of Luke. It it talks about the the people who are following Jesus, those early believers. They were hoping that it was going to be Jesus that was going to redeem Israel. But something happened, didn't it? They were following him. They were listening to him teach. They they had put their belief and trust in him. They were hoping that he was going to bring about the redemption of Israel. But what happened? He died. He was put on a cross, nailed to that cross, gave up his spirit on that cross, and was put in a tomb. And when that happened, they thought, oh my goodness, our hope has been destroyed because they had put their hope in Jesus. But what do we know happened three days later? Three days later, Jesus came back to life. He resurrected from the dead. He he showed us that God had received what he had done on the cross, and it makes all the difference in our lives. Now, the problem is, knowing that that is what hope is, the problem is, is that oftentimes we as human beings put our hope in other things. The Bible gives at least four, uh, possibly in my opinion, five at a minimum things that we as human beings, we put our hope in. Some people put their hope in good deeds. In John chapter 5, we, we see that there were those individuals that were religious and they had put their hope, listen, not in a Savior who was to come. They put their hope in their religious good deeds. That if they fulfilled the law, if they were good and nice and moral, if they fulfilled as many of the commandments as they could, they thought that their good deeds would get them into heaven. And so their hope was not in a savior to be born. Their hope was truly in how good they could be. 
The Bible teaches in Acts chapter 16 that some people put their hope in monetary profit. There was some men who had this means of earning a living, and, uh, and so as a result of this uh, way to earn a living, they thought, listen, as long as I have this income, as long as I have this job, as long as I have this way to get money, we're okay. But the moment that was removed from them, their hope uh, was taken away, and they got angry at the believers that were there. And all of that happened because they weren't hoping in a savior that was to come. They were putting their hope in monetary profit. There's a lot of us that do that. There's a lot of us, especially men, we put our hope not in a savior to be born. We put our hope in our jobs, our careers, and what we do to turn a profit. And we view our our stability in life through that lens. The Bible also says that there are some people who hope in financial riches. In 1 Timothy, it says, instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches. There's a lot of people, especially in American culture, and they are not looking or hoping uh, for the baby that would be born on Christmas Day. They're putting their hope and trust and confidence in financial riches how much is in their bank account, how much will be in their bank account, how much is in their savings account, what's in their 401k or their, or their IRAs, whatever's in their portfolio. They aren't looking to a person, they're looking to their financial wealth. We also see that some people put their hope in physical safety. There's a story in Acts chapter 27 where these sailors, they had put their hope and trust in their boat to keep them safe because they viewed their physical safety and they hoped for their physical safety. That's where their hope was. But the moment the sea became too rough and the moment their boat began to fail uh, and and they were uh, in fear for their physical safety, their hope was gone. There's a lot of us We put our hope and our trust and our confidence in how we're doing physically. Some even, in uh, Psalm chapter 20, we see that some people hope in physical strength. And guys, I think for some of us, that's how we live our lives, right? As long as I'm bigger, stronger, as long as I'm physically fit, I'm okay. I don't need anyone. I don't need God. And we put our hope in any or all of those items But today, as we go through Christmas, what we need to begin to understand is the hope that we have. Our hope is not in those things. Our hope is in the message of Christmas. And and, and here is question number two, and that is this. What does a believer hope for? If hope is this joyful uh, celebration of, of eagerly expecting and waiting for something, what is that for something we're waiting for? I think there's a, 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 a number of things at a minimum that the Bible tells us. For instance, the hope of believers is the appearing of a Savior. Titus chapter 2 says that we should be looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. You see, the hope that we have and what it is that we're looking for was the Savior to be born at Christmas. And so when those magi came to see the baby Jesus, They had been looking for a savior that would come. Believers also fixed their hope on God's salvation. 1 Timothy chapter 4 tells us it is for this that we labor and strive because we have fixed our hope on the living God who is the savior of all men. You see, as believers, we are hoping in that one day God is going to... um, truly accomplish our salvation. Now, when I say that, I mean, it's accomplished. When Jesus was born and then Jesus lived his perfect life and he died on the cross, listen, he fulfilled it. It is accomplished. It is done. But we are awaiting the reality of the byproducts of that salvation that's been accomplished so that one day we will step out of this life into the next. We'll step out of uh, time and into eternity and we will spend eternity with our God in heaven being saved from the penalty and wages of our sin. The Bible also says that Jesus delivers us from death. We are longing for the expectation to be delivered from death. That's our hope. Just as Jesus died that one uh, day when we die, just as he was resurrected, we will be resurrected and we will overcome death, hell, and the grave. And that's what we're looking forward to. 
Our hope, according to 1 Peter, is in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You see, if Jesus was not resurrected, then what hope do we have? So we are looking forward to the reality of resurrection from the dead. The Bible says we are, uh, the hope for believers is eternal life. And so the resurrection of Jesus is this beautiful reminder that, that we can have eternal life with the Father in heaven. But not only that, believers are hoping for righteousness, that one day through the Spirit, by faith, we can experience the hope of righteousness. In other words, that we will truly be resurrected um, and, and experience eternal life, but not, listen, in sinfulness, but in righteousness, in a restored right relationship with God where our sins have been uh, forgiven. We have been washed clean. We are now moving forward as sinless individuals experiencing the holiness of God in a relationship with Him. That's what we're looking forward to. We're not looking forward to an eternity of sinfulness. We're looking forward to an eternity of righteousness. Because as believers, our hope is in the glory of God. That we will see the glory of God, we'll experience the glory of God, and we'll spend an eternity in the presence of the glorious God who saved us. Amen? That's what a believer hopes for. But here's question number three, and that is, what does a believer hope for? in. What does a believer hope in? The most important thing you can take from this message is this statement, so listen carefully. Believers hope in a personal God that sent his son to be our savior. That is what we hope in. Where should you place your hope today? You should place your hope as a believer in a personal God that sent his son to be our savior. That is the message of Christmas. Why did Christmas happen? Why was a baby born and then placed in a manger? Why did Magi travel to see this baby? Because a personal God had sent his son to be our savior. If we had more time, I would love to dig into the story. But in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew chapter 12, the prophet Isaiah is quoted. And it says in that passage, it's quoting Isaiah and it says, and uh, in his name, the Gentiles will hope. That is such an important statement at this moment in time because we're Gentiles. If, if I were to ask every one of us, probably more than likely, every one of us is not from uh, the Hebrew background. Every one of us is probably from a different uh, background. And so that would make us Gentiles. So that statement is a reminder, what should we be putting our hope in? What should we hope are? Well, that statement says, listen, God's going to send someone and God's going to bring someone into this world and he is going to be the one in which we will put our hope in. The Bible teaches us that that's Jesus. Jesus is the hope for us as Gentiles. In 1 John chapter 3, everyone who has this hope fixed on him, that's Jesus, purifies himself. In other words, believers are to fix their hope on Jesus. Listen to me, our hope, it's not in riches. Our hope is not in physical security. Our hope is not in strength. Our hope is not, listen, wrapped in paper and placed under a tree. Our hope is in the person of Jesus. Okay, we don't put ourselves in uh, our faith and hope in something. We put our faith and hope in someone. Jesus is our hope. So as we begin to unpack this, what we see is that hope allows a person to draw near to God. You see, when we put our faith and trust and our hope in Jesus Christ, through that relationship with Jesus, we are able to come into the presence and draw near to God the Father through that faith and hope. Because Christ in us is the hope of our glory. Colossians chapter one teaches us that. So understand this. As we gather together today, as we gather together and celebrate Christmas, we need to know how it's a season of hope. We need to know what hope is. We need to know what we're hoping for. And we need to know what we're placing our hope in. So let me help you apply this real quick in two ways and we're done. Number one, Christmas, a Christmas focused on money and presents is cruel. Now, Brian, you said you're going to preach an encouraging message. That's a very um, strong statement. You're right. Let me say it again. A Christmas 
focused on money and presence is cruel. Brian, my kids are here. <laughs> Good, pay attention. Let me tell you why a Christmas focused on money and presence is cruel. Because it leaves the soul with no hope. If, if you raise children and if you raise your family and, and encourage your family to celebrate Christmas and all that you focus on is the money and the exchange of presents, if that's all you focus on during Christmas, listen to me, they will grow up and live lives with no hope. The hope is not the presence under the tree. The hope, listen, gave his life nailed to a tree. Don't miss that. When we celebrate Christmas, a Christmas focused on, on the presents and on money, that's cruel because it leaves the soul with no hope. Number two, and I'm done. A Christmas, or at Christmas, we shouldn't focus on the present. We should focus on the person. Okay, so many of us, we're like, hey, what are you hoping to get for Christmas? And we say, oh, and we start naming all the presents we want to get. Christmas is not about focusing on a present. It's about focusing on a person because the person, all right, laid down his life so that you and I could be forgiven of our sin. Now, if you're here today and, and you've, you've made Christmas about the presents, okay, I want you to just be honest for a moment and say, maybe today you need to change that perspective. Maybe you're here for the first time and you're like, oh my goodness, I had no idea that this is really the way Christmas should be. It's okay. Let's change it. Let's make sure that we have the right perspective as we move into tomorrow. So, for those of us that need to change our perspective, if you're here today and you need to confess Jesus as your Savior and repent of your sins, I encourage you to do that today. Right where you sit right now in the quietness of this moment, you can quietly pray to God from your soul. No one around you needs to see you. No one around you needs to hear you. But from your soul, from the deepest part of everything within you, you can just simply pray a, God, a, pray a prayer to God in heaven. And, and it just, you just need to be honest with you. You say, God, I know I'm a sinner. And God, I know I need your forgiveness. I've made Christmas the focus of so many other things. But I know today it needs to be about Jesus. I want Jesus to forgive my sins and change my life so that I can keep the focus on Christmas the way it should be. And right now you can pray that prayer. Right now in the quietness of the moment. Right now. For others, here's what you need to make sure you do. Tomorrow or tonight when you celebrate Christmas, you need to make sure that the message of Jesus being born, living a perfect life, dying on the cross, being buried and being raised three days later, that needs to be a part of your Christmas experience and your Christmas celebration. So at some point, listen, read that story, tell that story, share that story. Listen, parents and grandparents, tell the story. Tell the story of the hope that you have in Jesus Christ and what he did, amen? Make that a part of your Christmas celebration.